Hi, Tangle friends. My name is Annie, and I'd like to get on camera for a few minutes today just to tell you thank you so much for all of your support, your wonderful comments, your well wishes for our new home. I am coming to you today from this cute little hut that's on the property. It's just a um, a little a little hunter's hut, so to speak. And I think it's just so cute. I am in charge of all the flowers around here. So I, I did plant these. And I do show you glimpses of our property and our location and our environment in the uh, introductions of each of my videos. I know it's probably not for everyone. I have gotten some really nice comments back from people saying they appreciate that. And the reason I do that is that I want you to get to know me. I think you can learn better from any teacher if you kind of know them and have um, an idea of where they are, what they do, what their background is, etc. So you all already know that I'm a certified botanical illustrator and a CZT10, that's a certified a certified Zen Tangle teacher from the class number 10. And I do want to just say, if you don't like those intros, just fast forward them. Um, that's the beauty of YouTube. That's the beauty of also learning online. You can stop where you need to. You can rewind. It's it's wonderful. I'd also like to ask for, for not only your continuing support, but if you could please uh, post your beautiful creations that you learned from me all over the web and, and mention my channel so that I can grow my channel so I can keep it going. I do want to give you a heads up uh, that we should be getting our things at the end of this month. And after that happens, I might be a bit overwhelmed trying to really move in. So I might be taking a break in August, just, just to let you know. But I'll, I'm here and today we're going to have fun with a tangle that I think is my own. I, I don't know. There's just so many out there. And if you don't know the names to look for them, you can't really tell if they're new or not. But I'm calling this Ray, and I'm going to show you how to make another flower Ray. So let's go for it. I'm calling my flower Ray because it's like a Ray flower here, and it's built almost actually of two tangles from Zentangle headquarters, Bronx Cheer and Inipod. And we're just going to build a flower out of that. So I'm starting today with a blue background that I made with my Lindy's Magical Shakers. And this is uh, my iris compass that I'm going to use to pencil in my guideline. I have an array of pencils here that I grabbed that to are tone in tone with the little colored flecks in this tile that we will use for shading. You can do this in black and white, obviously, and the shading is pretty simple, actually. Then I've also got my colorless blender <clears throat> to blend those colored pencils with and a white pencil. You could, we're gonna see if white colored pencil or General's white charcoal works better in the end, but I think the pencil will work on this really well. And then I do have obviously a pencil and a marker. Today I'm using the Copic Multiliner because it does not bleed when I blend with my Copic um, marker blender <laughs> so let's do our guy lines this is like a three and a half by three and a half inch tile that i just made myself making a circle and then i'm going to make a smaller circle in the center for our bronx cheer center all right so that's what it looks like a big donut right we're just going to use this as a guideline where to stop with our building of our ray flower. But let's start out with the easy part, which is just basically building perfs around this whole circle, kissing each other. And you can vary the sizes of the perfs if you'd like. Oh. I did, for example, on this one, I did some larger and some smaller. So today I think I'm just going to be pretty even about them all. I want to make sure to fill in these little areas. Okay, now we're going to start out by dividing up our space into four sections. You can use a pencil if, if it helps you. I don't really need to at this point, but I'm going to show you 
that you can use your pencil string. And we're going to build our first petal around that line. I'm going to start from the bottom and bow out and come a little bit past this line of a uh, circle guide. And then I'm going to use this center line to make our inipod uh, shape where we're going to fill that also with perf perfs. Once again, you're going to want to fill in those interstices black. And now we're going to start at the top and kind of do an aura line. And I like to do mine pretty close and we're going to bow out and pinch down at the bottom, starting as close to the top as you can, just like we do with Inipod. That makes for this really nice self-shading tangle that you almost really don't have to shade. to see the depth. Now we're going to do that three more times. I like to start my perfs in the center and then build out. This is a tangle where you could easily use that breaking line to make sparkles like that. But I'm going to not, just because I'm going to be uh, highlighting mine anyway with white. Okay, once again. So that's the first part of our flower. Now we're going to add petals in between them. Using that as our guideline, we're going to just go out about the same width and try to touch each of the sides. So these petals might be a little bit larger. So I'm gonna do that again. We do want them touching though, so that we can put another row of petals behind. So you're gonna come up, touch. And then we're gonna do the same thing. There is almost finished ray flower. What we want to do now is go in here where there's this little interstice that where the flowers met, the petals met, and color that in dark. That just really helps us see where they separate. And then we're going to fill it out, just like we've been doing with the other petals, uh, the other flowers that we've been working on this summer. And we're just going to start from the top this time, and maybe a little bit lower than the outside ones. Bring a line down the center, and then we're just going to bow out on either side lightly, not filling these ones in with the perfs. These are going to be acting more like sepals. So many petals, lots of chance to just relax with all of this repetitive line and enjoy watching your flower come to life. Okay, now since we have so many petals going on, I'd like to give our eye a little bit of a rest by waiting some of the lines to indicate lifting up some and pushing some back. Okay, looking better. So now we are left with the shading, but before we do that, if you'd like to, at this point, you can clean up that guideline. And as you can see, this is already a really pretty flower that's pretty much self-shaded, but we're going to make it pop like crazy by adding some shading around the center and in here. And if you're doing this in black and white, it's just, you're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to be using my colored pencils. 
So I'm looking at the color here and I've got to find a color over here that looks darker. And I think this one will work really well. So we can see the shading. It's tone in tone, but it's a little darker. So I'm going to add that all around the outside of this center. I'm doing pretty light layering because I'm going to layer yet another color. Before I do that, I'm going to go in here where that outside petal needs to be receding. So we're putting some shading there. I need to kind of switch this up now since this is more of a green tone. Let's see. Got to see what kind of pencils I have. Here's kind of a bluish green. You just have to kind of look at your colors that are there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the blue on top of that. That way it's going to blend more be more coordinated with the colors that are on the tile. Then I'm going to put a little bit also at the tips to make them it's basically just like our line work, right? Self shaded. I'm also going to put a little bit of shading around this perf ball. <laughs> for lack of a better word, just so that it looks a little bit more spherical. Leaving that area white or light, as light as it can be. I'm going to get really some dark darks down here with a darker blue. And then I might do a little bit on one side of each of these openings. On the other side, we're going to do some lighter color, like white, just to give it that bead look. Now I'm going to get out my blender. I have a piece of paper here so that I can always clean my tip. And I'm just going to flick and blend where the colored pencil is. Especially if you're using Sakura pens, don't dwell on the black. It might come up. It might uh, get muddy. This is why I love the Copic Multiliner. They are seriously permanent and they never lift in this process. So when you have a lot of close line work like, line work like that, you have to be careful with your colorless solvents. Okay, so to make this really, really pop, we're going to take our white colored pencil and give it some highlights right in the center where this is on thick, its thickest point because this would be bowing out to the light, right? I'm going to do that on all of them. And then we can do a little bit here in the background, even just Nah, a little bit more than a line is, is better. So let's get it blended. This really lightens up your flower. Little, sh little shimmers. <clears throat> And then on our perfs, I'm going to go back in and put a little pearl on the top left of each of those. So it really makes them look like little beads in the pod. If for some reason your colored pencil isn't taking, you can try your General's Charcoal. And then if that doesn't take, you can also take out a white jelly roll and, and do the same thing. But this colored pencil is working fine because I haven't layered up too much. This is a problem. Sometimes people, when they're layering, they get too many layers on and it gets this waxy buildup going and then they can't add any more colored pencil on top. So that's what you have to kind of be careful of. But 
that wasn't my case, so I am highlighting with my white. So everybody, meet Ray. This is Ray, and I would love for you to figure out what to do back there by yourself. I might finish mine off and post it with my um, announcement. But in the meantime, I'm just going to sign and date and ask you to please do the same and share your work all over the web for everyone to know where they can learn how to draw a ray. Thank okay, you. so I'm back again because I looked at this and decided I wanted it to have a little bit more sparkle and I did take my jelly roll and I'm adding just at a little dot on the upper left corner to indicate that super duper highlight. And I think it's so pretty, especially with these really dark backgrounds. If you if you're doing this in black and white and graphite, you just want to make sure to save out a really bright highlight. You could even e lift with your eraser to make sure that that stays really bright. So much better. All the way down into that teeny tiny corner to give us the illusion that there's a bead down there reflecting off the light. Isn't that pretty? Makes such a difference. I'm not going to put it down here where it's shaded because that, that would be in shadow, right? <laughs> you don't, you don't want to do that. I mean, you, you could also add a little bit more up there, but I kind of like actually having that background uh, petal less, less in your face. So should be a little more muted. There we have it. Finished Ray. Thanks for joining me today. Have fun and have a great week. I will see you next week. Bye-bye for now.